But woe unto him that has the law given, yea, that has all the commandments of God like unto us, and that transgresseth them, and that wasteth the days of his probation, for awful is his state. O oh, that cunning plan of the evil one! O oh, the vainness and the frailties of the feet! in the of men. When they are burned, they think they are right, and they hearken not unto the counsel of God. For they set it aside, supposing they know of themselves, wherefore their wish, wisdom is foolishness, and it provided them not. Profiteth. Profiteth them not, and they shall perish. Ooh, ooh, no words there. So, all the people in the world think they're super smart. I don't need God. I got everything. I got my I brains. Need. That's all I need. No. I don't need anyone to tell me anything. I went to school. I got everything. These people basically say that they know more than God does. Is that true? No. Compared to God, their wisdom is what? Foolishness. Foolishness. Heavenly Father looks down and goes, wow. You guys have no idea how much you don't know. And they lose the blessings and the guidance of God, and it leads to kind of bad decisions, bad choices, all those sorts of things. And I kind of like what Jacob is saying here at the very beginning of this verse. He was talking about the plan of salvation. Whose plan is that? Jesus. Jesus' plan. It's mm -hmm. Heavenly Father's plan, right? But who else has a plan? Satan. Satan. What kind of plan is that? Usually when they're talking about Satan and how he lives, he's in a state of what? What's the word they use? Misery. Misery. Because he wants you to be like miserable him. like he is. Exactly. He is not happy, so it makes him happy to see other people unhappy. So, um, yeah. And is the adversary a pretty smart person? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it says it's a cunning plan. So he's got a lot of tricks to get people to go away from God and to follow him instead. So God's plan is a plan of salvation, bringing us up. Satan's plan is a plan of destruction to uh, bring us down. And we want to make sure we're following the right plan. But to be learned is good if they hearken unto the counsels of God. Is it good to be smart and intelligent and to think about things and to figure things out? Yeah, but... Being smart and intelligent and learned and having a lot of knowledge is great as long as we want. Listen to God. But well, woe unto the rich who are rich as to the things of the world. For because they are rich, they despise the poor and they persecute the meek. Their hearts are upon their treasure. Wherefore their treasure is their God. Behold, their treasure shall perish with them also. That their riches is their God. Which means what? Like they they worship their gold and stuff. And and not worship. only that, but they also think they're better than others who might not have as much money as them. So they look and down at people. Yeah, they look. Bad. They're very proud. Is being rich bad, or is treating people badly and choosing money over God? Is that what's bad? Yes. Yeah, that's the bad part. Um, it's okay so if you, rich. It's okay if you're rich as long as you help others, serve others, and you serve Heavenly Father. Right? It's okay to have money if you're doing those things. And that you also treat people who don't have money kindly. Don't but look at them. But to get money, people yeah. will stop serving others and helping mm -hmm. others. And they'll stop serving who? The Lord. The Lord. And that's when being rich is not a good thing. And woe unto the deaf that will not hear, for they shall perish. Does this mean no. literally physically no, deaf? No, it doesn't no. mean literally deaf. It means like deaf. If you're teaching them and they're just refusing to listen. Or even or even if they could also maybe be members of the church and the prophet could potentially, you know, be teaching something that they might not agree with, and then they might be, you know. Falling on isn't there? deaf ears. On deaf ears, right? On deaf ears, yeah. So we don't want to be that person. We want to hear and follow the teachings of God. Yeah, that's good. Well, unto the blind, thou will not see, for they shall perish also. Yeah, what does that mean? And they don't read the scriptures. Like they're not seeing spiritual things. Yes. Very good. Well, unto the uncircumcised of heart. For knowledge of their iniquities shall smite them at the last day. 
So a circumcision was synonymous of people of the covenant in ancient days. So when you think of circumcision, you think of joining into God's covenant. So if you're uncircumcised, that means you're what? Joining not God's yeah, covenant. Yeah, you're not in the covenant, which means you're not giving your heart to God. To God. And one day when you're in final judgment and you've, all of your iniquities are brought to your remembrance, it will mean judgment and condemnation at the last day, which is what he's saying here. Woe unto the liar, for she shall be thrust down to hell. Ooh, how does Heavenly Father feel about lies? A pillow is a liar, grounds hell. Bam. Thrust down. Yeah. So yes, Heavenly yes. Father wants us to be what? An honest person. Honest. honest. Woe unto the murderer who deliberately killeth. For he shall die. Lord, so he's he's actually going over Carl Jacob is reviewing the, 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 commandments. the commandments with the people, right? That murdering is obviously against God's law. Well, unto them who commit murders, for they shall be thrust out to hell. Well, these are people who are doing evil things with their bodies, the things with their bodies that they shouldn't be doing. Yea, woe well unto those that worship idols, for the devil of all devils delighteth in them. So idols are things we create ourselves and then we worship them. Act as if they have power. You made it. It should be worshiping you. And God's like, don't worship those idols. Worship me as the one who created you. And in time, woe unto all those who die in their sins, for they shall return to God and behold His face and remain in their sins. Yeah, because it sounds like right there, we're gonna die in their sins. We're gonna be in front of Heavenly Father, still in their sins. Soiled, soiled in their sins. Oh, my beloved brethren, remember the awfulness in transgressing against that holy God, and also the awfulness of yielding to the enticings of that cunning one. Remember, to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life eternal. So it's to be carnally minded is death. So what is it to be carnally minded? Oh, my beloved brethren, give ear to my words. Remember the greatness of the Holy One of Israel. Do not say that I have spoken hard things against you. For if ye do, ye will revile against the truth. For I have spoken the words of your Maker. I know that the words of truth are hard against all uncleanness. But the righteous fear them not. For they love the truth and are not shaken. Yeah, so is Jacob using some pretty strong words in this uh, yep. sermon that he's giving? Mm -hmm. yeah. And now he's kind of worried what? <laughs> the, people, the people are like, you're so mean to yeah, us. Why are you so mean to us, Jacob? Well, what's he trying to say? That they, to be righteous so you can believe this in your, it, it doesn't feel hard on you. Oh then, my beloved brethren, come unto the Lord, the Holy One. Remember that his paths are righteous. Behold, the way for man is narrow, but it lieth in a straight course before him. And the keeper of the gate is the Holy One of Israel. And he employeth no servant there. And there is none other way save it be by the gate, for he cannot be deceived. For the Lord God is his name. So when we show up at the gate that will allow us to enter the presence of God, who is that gate? Jesus. Jesus. Has he appointed anybody else to be the deciding person for him? No. And why does Jesus get to determine whether or not we live with God? Again? Because he's felt our pains. Because he's the one who felt our pains and our sins, right? And because he paid for all of our sins, can we tell him, oh, I didn't do that? No. He's like, I know you did because I'm the one who had to feel, it. feel the pain of what you did. So can we deceive him and tell him, no, that wasn't me? Yeah, yeah. Oh. He felt pain of the sins in the future too. Yeah, that's why it's called an infinite atonement because it's for yeah. past, present, and future. And whoso knocketh to him will he open, and the wise and the learned, and they that are rich who are puffed up because of their rain, and their wisdom and their riches, yea, they are they whom he despises, save they shall cast these things away can save themselves who was before God and come down in the depth of humility, he will not open unto him them. I <laughs> am a fool. <laughs> F-O-L. Compared to the knowledge of God. So basically this is a message of humility, right? He's reminding us that 
We shouldn't put ourselves above God. We should put God in front of us. above ourselves. But the things of the wise and the prudent shall be hid from them forever. Yea, that happiness which is prepared for the saints. So the people who think they're all full of themselves. Get ripped! Are they going to get to have the happiness of the saints? No. No, that'll be hid from them forever. Oh my beloved brethren, remember my words. Behold, I take off my garments and I shake them before you. I praise the God of my salvation, for he view me with his all searching eye. Wherefore, ye shall know at the last day, and all men shall be judged of their works that the God of Israel did witness that I shall bear iniquity from my soul, and that I stand with brightness before him, and am rid of your blood. So pretty much he's saying, I'm teaching you guys. Heavenly Father knows I'm teaching you guys. I'm washing my hands. I'm dusting myself off from all your iniquities because I'm trying to teach you, and I'm trying to tell you to repent and you guys are choosing not to. And I don't want Heavenly Father to hold that against me. He's fulfilling his calling in the church and doing everything he can to fulfill his calling. So we should fulfill our callings too. Very good. Oh, my beloved brethren, turn away from your sins. Shake off the chains of him that would bind you fast, because that is the person who's chaining us down, trying to bind us. Satan. Satan. Come unto that God who is the rock of your salvation. So get away from the worldly things that Satan wants you to do. Come to the Lord. Prayer souls for that glorious day when justice shall be administered unto the righteous, even the day of judgment, that ye may not shrink with awful fear, that ye may not remember your awful guilt and perfect perfectness, and be constrained to exclaim, Holy, holy, our right judgment, O Lord God, Almighty, but I know my guilt and transgress thy law. My transgressions are mine, and the devil hath obtained me that I am a prey to his awful misery. Do you want to say, God, you are just, and I am prey to the devil? Is that what you want to be saying in the last days and final judgment? No. So we want to be clean when we when we come before the Lord. But behold, my brethren, is it expedient that I should awake you to an awful reality of these things? Would I harrow up your souls if your minds were pure? Would I be plain unto you according to the plainness of truth if you were free from sin? He's like, guys, if you were living righteously, would I be talking so strongly to you? No. I could be talking about all the nice things of the gospel. Like right Nephi now. did. Right. I do feel like Hi. Nephi and Jacob were kind of good cop, bad cop. <laughs> Oh, yeah. like Nephi was like the more heartwarming kind of message. Yeah. And Jacob's like, Psh. yeah, Jacob's more the, the yeah, the kind of strong worded sort of thing. Behold, if ye were holy, I would speak unto you of holiness. But as ye are not holy, if ye look upon me as a teacher, it must needs be expedient that I teach you the consequences of sin. Yeah. This was going back to the other one. He was like saying, hey. If you guys were doing what you were supposed to be doing, we'd have the completely like different conversations. Behold, my soul abhorreth sin. So just the thought of sin, it just, Jacob just, he, he, just the thought of it makes him feel bad. My soul abhorreth sin, and my heart delighteth in righteousness. And I will praise the holy name of my God. He's trying to say, guys, I'm not saying I'm mad at you, or I'm, I'm angry, at, or I hate you guys. I hate... Sin, right? So no, that's, that's what he's trying to say, guys. It's not you. It's I hate what you're doing. It's this <laughs> behavior. Exactly. It's like, no, you're, you're. I love you. I just you're hate what you're doing. I just do not like your bad stuff. But he's saying, my soul abhorrent sin and delight in righteousness. But who is he really talking for in this situation? Jesus. Jesus, right? Is that statement true for Jesus and Heavenly Father also? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Come, my brethren, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come buy and eat. Yet come buy wine and milk without money and without price. How much does it cost to uh, learn the gospel? Nothing. Nothing. Wherefore, do not spend money for that which is of no worth, nor your labor for that which cannot satisfy. Hearken diligently unto me, and remember the words which I have spoken. 
and come unto the Holy One of Israel, and feast upon that which perishes, perisheth not. Neither can be corrupted, and let your soul delight in fatness. This one stood out to me where it says, your labor for that which cannot satisfy. Don't focus your energy on things that aren't, aren't worthwhile, that aren't going to satisfy you spiritually. Yeah, he's giving some fiscal advice. So, so yeah. monetary suggestions. Yeah. Did you mean to say fiscal? <laughs> no, fiscal is another word for money or finances. Mm -hmm. And do people spend their whole lives trying to make money? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And do they work and work and work to make money and don't really work and work and work to draw close to the Lord? Yes. Yeah. He says, don't labor for things that aren't going to satisfy you in the end. And if you do get money, don't what? Waste it. Waste it. Don't spend money for that, which is of what? No worth. No worth. And can people make very foolish decisions with their money? Yes. And spend it on things that are just an utter it's, waste. It's pain. But people spend their money on fun and recreation so much that they often don't have money left for the actual things they need. But they spent it all on stuff yeah, that is of like, no worth. No worth. Behold, my beloved brethren, remember the words of your God. Pray unto him continually by day. He gives thanks unto his holy name by night. Let your hearts be joyous. So what is he teaching him? In, what is he teaching them in this verse? To pray. To pray. And what else? Remember him. Remember, Remember him. Words. the words. And where do we find the words? The God. Yes, scriptures. So even, I mean, I know you do your prayers morning for your meals at night. You can never pray too much. But you can always talk to him. Sometimes I'll be like doing laundry and I'll be folding there and I'll be talking to him. I'll be having a conversation with him. It's not out loud like I'm talking to you guys right now, but it's just in my mind. And we should always be giving what? Thank you. Thanks. Very good. And behold how great the covenants of the Lord, and how great his condescensions unto the children of men. And because of his greatness and his grace and mercy, he has promised unto us that our seed shall not utterly be destroyed according to the flesh, but that he would preserve them, and in future generations they shall become a righteous branch under the house of Israel. So as he, when he says our seed, is he talking about the descendants of Nephi or the de descendants of Lehi? What happened to Nephi's descendants? Were they, they were ripped! Were they, were they utterly destroyed? Yes! So what's Jake, is he referring to Nephi's descendants or all of Lehi's descendants? I wish I all of them ripped! The Native American people would not be destroyed in the last days, but would come back to the Lord and become a righteous what? People. A righteous people, a righteous branch. And now, my brethren, I would speak unto you more, but on the morrow, declare unto you the remainder of my words. Amen. So he's speaking today and coming back to speak again tomorrow. This was probably their version of a what? General conference. General conference. All right, guys. Subscribe. Nice Click the subscribe button. Leave a like. Ring that bell and keep studying the scriptures.